$800 versus $1,100. Is it worth spending the extra cash? Well, that is the first difference between the 15 and 15 Pro, and I have a total of 20 to share with you guys. Number two are the materials. Now, regular iPhones have always come with aluminum frames, whereas the Pros came with stainless that were more durable but heavier. With the 15 Pros though, we have titanium, which is even more durable, and it is also lighter. And the next one is comfort and size. Both have curved edges, which is really nice for comfort. But this year, the Pro is actually slightly smaller than the regular model. And it's usually the other way around. And thickness wise, it's a very little difference, which is nice. But that leads me into number four. And that is the camera bumps. Usually the pros have bigger ones, but this year they are massive and they stick out a ton, which means that it's actually quite a bit thicker there. You're going to get a lot more wobble. Number five is the action button and that helps with usability. This is something brand new where you have extra commands that you could do without having to actually turn on your screen and go into settings or press a certain button to enable uh, an app or a feature that is built right in and that is quite nice. Now number six are the cameras. Now the iPhone 14 Pros got the 48 megapixel camera and that was a major improvement but this year the regular 15 also has a 48 megapixel pixel sensor and that's going to be really nice. Now the difference is it is a smaller sensor which is why the camera bumps I just talked about aren't anywhere near as large. Now the Pro does get a 3x lens and it has support for Apple RAW and ProRes but with that said, the 15 lineup is still gonna be a nice upgrade from the previous iPhone. But camera upgrades only do so much if you really wanna step up your game without even needing a new phone. Check out the Insta360 Flow, the best gimbal for iPhone with smooth AI tracking. I love the foldable all-in-one compact design that takes just seconds to use or put away, and it's genius built-in tripod, a full-on selfie stick, as well as a tripod mount. The AI tracking is incredible, with just your support to enable Deep Track 3.0, which tracks you super well, and unlike others, it doesn't freak out if you go out of frame, and it is smart enough to wait and not track other people, and then re-identify you when you're back in frame. You can even use zooming and tracking, as well as slow motion tracking, and all the recovery features still work. The smart wheel gives you so many physical controls, and the software is packed with features like 360 photos, hyperlapse, and much more, while being super easy to use with all-day battery life. So if you're ready to take your videos and photos to a level a camera upgrade can't do, check out the amazing Insta360 Flow using the link in the video description. Number seven is LiDAR for AR applications and it also helps photos. It's something that has always been exclusive to the pros. And number eight, we're moving into displays. Now, thankfully the 15 is going to get the dynamic island that we've had for a year on the pros and that is great, but the pro will also have thinner, better bezels, one and a half millimeters. It's pretty much half of the 15, so the screen will look larger. Next, we have the 2000 nits of peak brightness compared to 1200 on the regular 15. And this is great for outdoor use and for HDR video. That is also a lot better, even though both have OLED displays. Now with that number 10, the speakers will sound better. Every year, even though you have the same size, Apple puts in better speakers on the Pro and it's definitely noticeable, louder, better bass. That is a plus if you like listening to music and watching videos on your iPhone. Now 11 is the always on display. I absolutely love this feature and Apple keeps it exclusive to the Pro lineup. Number 12 is the screen refresh rate. Now this is a huge deal for me, having ProMotion with 120 hertz that can also go down to one hertz compared to 60. Well, it is super smooth and it saves battery life. For number 13, we have the base storage. Now for the 14 lineup, both phones came with 128 gigs of storage, but now 
for the extra price, you're gonna get 256, so double. And with that, the maximum is gonna be two terabytes compared to 512. Now, I don't know who needs two terabytes of storage, but some people will pay for that. And it is exclusive to the Pro phone. For the next one, we have eight gigs of RAM compared to six. Now with the 14 lineup, we had six on both, which was weird. Usually the regular one has less, but with this next phone, you are gonna get more RAM, so it's gonna be able to keep more applications open in the background instead of having them auto close. And this leads us up to the reason why, and that is number 15, the A17 processor, compared to, of course, the A16, a generation behind. We have three nanometer compared to four nanometer, and this new chip is gonna give us more performance, it's gonna give us less heat, and that's gonna also save battery life, which is going to be really, really nice, especially if you're outdoors and the screen is dimming for that heat aspect of it. Now, number 16 ties into it, the battery capacity. We're seeing 3,650 milliamp hours compared to 3,877. So a larger battery and it's going to use less power for some of the other things that we talked about, which is going to be great. Now with that, number seven is the charging speed. We are seeing 35 watts of fast charging compared to what Apple advertises is 20 but in reality, you can actually hit 25 if you have a fast enough charger. And that also means you'll be able to charge up your phone faster. Now for number 18, we have new MagSafe. Now we know they're gonna do a 20 watt MagSafe and there's a chance that the Pro is only gonna do 20 watts and they're gonna keep the regular iPhone at that base 15, even if you buy a new puck that's capable of outputting more power, which is just kind of a sucky thing when you know that you could get more. And for number 19, this is a big one. Both phones are gonna be moving to USB Type-C, but the regular iPhone is still gonna be USB 2.0, which has been around for over 10 years, compared to Thunderbolt for the first time ever in any phone on the 15 Pro. Now, if you're gonna to need to transfer footage, photos back up, this is gonna give you over 100 times faster real world transfer speeds. And that is gonna be amazing because so far these iPhones have been limited and that's gonna be really awesome for me personally. And the people are saying that you're gonna to have to buy the cable separately. It's not gonna come with that fast cable in the box. And it makes sense. Those cables are expensive and not everybody will need it. Let me know if you care about that down in the comments below. And for the last one, number 20, that is the colors. Now we've always had a difference in colors. The pros come with less options and they're more subdued. Um, but this year they are dropping gold. So it's gonna be even more simple compared to the brighter color options of the iPhone 15 lineup. We're gonna have uh, some new colors. I personally love the red, how it pops. Whereas the pros have more basic, simple colors. And I really wish Apple would step it up and give us something a little more interesting. I would love to have a red pro iPhone. So there you guys go. There are 20 differences between these two phones. Let me know if you're gonna be spending the extra 300 bucks to go with the Pro compared to the regular iPhone where the price tag is staying the same. Go ahead and click that circle above to subscribe. Check out the Insta360 Flow down in the description below. The thing really, really amazed me and I'm gonna be using it when I'm shooting with my phone. Check out the video right over there and I'll see you in the next one.